Happy Christmas, everybody. Um, delighted to team up with Kenwood again, just to bring you our take on a Christmas classic. But what we're gonna give you today is a beautiful recipe for a Prosecco and raspberry jelly trifle. Okay, first up for our little trifle is we need to make our Prosecco and raspberry jelly. So into a saucepan, you can add 25 grams of caster sugar and about 50 mils of water. And you can just put that onto a, a medium heat. I'm gonna bring it just to it, till it starts to simmer, just to dissolve all that sugar. And then you're gonna drop in the raspberries. So we're gonna let them cook down. And then for our Prosecco jelly, you're gonna need about half a bottle, about 350 mils. I suppose the great thing about when you open a bottle of Prosecco, you can't put the cork back in, so you'll have no choice but to have a glass yourself. So we're just gonna simmer together our sugar, water, and raspberries, just for about two to three minutes. Once that does, you can go straight in with the Prosecco. And we just want to bring that to just below the boil. While that's heating, we just need to prepare the gelatin. So with the gelatin, we just need to bloom it. So the colder the water, the better. So we actually, ice water is best. It means then you don't lose any of the setting properties of the gelatin. Just sit that in the ice water and just allow that the Prosecco and raspberries heat together. So our gelatin is nicely softened. So what you can simply just do is once it's softened, just squeeze out the excess water. And you can keep that whole lot to one side. We just want to blitz everything together. So just off the heat then, we're simply just going to drop in our gelatin and the heat from the liquid will be enough to dissolve our gelatin. Stir that together. So we're just going to strain the jelly. Uh, just to remove any of the little pulp or little seeds from the raspberries. And we're actually going to use a little muslin cloth. So you can just let, let it work through itself. So whatever you decide to serve your um, trifle in, I'm just going to simply pour straight in. And you can see how the jelly is lovely and clear. It's got that gorgeous colour from the raspberries. So I'm going to suspend some raspberries in the jelly, but if I were to drop in right now, they would start to sink. So what we'll do is we'll allow the jelly to start setting in the fridge, and then when it's kind of halfway there, we'll drop our raspberries in, so they almost kind of float and get suspended in the jelly. So we'll pop that into the fridge. So while that is setting in the fridge, we are going to make our sponge. So we are going with 125 grams of caster sugar and just one egg. I'm just gonna mix that together. We let that come together. We wanna to get it nice and light and airy, and then nice and slowly then we're just gonna trail on the oil. And you don't wanna pour it all in one go. Kind of a bit like you'd kind of make it, you're making a bit of basically an emulsion, a bit like you make a mayonnaise. It's really nice and gently pouring it in and letting it whisk together. And then for lightness then as well, we are going to whip three egg whites. Um, now do keep the egg yolks at, to one side because we will need them in the custard that we're making in a little, little while. Again, I'm just going to use the little Kenwood hand blender with the whisk attachment. So it's great when you have to multitask. So we want to whip our egg whites just a little kind of soft peak. So we're just going to increase the speed on our mixer a little bit here and we'll start to add in the vegetable oil. Once all the oil has been incorporated, you can detach the bowl. So that's kind of what we're looking at. And then we're simply just going to sift in our flour, pinch of salt and baking powder. And you can just combine everything. So the cake mix is going to stiffen up just with the incorporation of the flour. So you can kind of see what, what we're getting here. So what we'll do now is we'll actually take a little bit of the egg white. And you can be quite vigorous with this a little bit. It just helps to loosen the mix. Like where we'd often be quite gentle when it comes to folding egg whites. 
just by using a little bit here, loosens the mix, so then when we fold in the remaining egg white, it makes it much, much easier. So for this cake, I've actually preheated my oven to 170 degrees. And now, so it's, it's warmed up nicely, so it's ready once we are. Fold in the remaining egg white. This one I'm gonna be nice and gently. So you're kind of going around the bowl and through the center. I've just got a little cake tin here. All our mix is going straight in. And you can just help the mix into the corners. And so we just have a nice tin layer. So we're looking probably about a centimeter and a half and it's gonna it's gonna rise up. So we preheat our oven to 170 degrees. It's gonna bake for about 20 minutes. We'll check it after 15 just to make sure. Set a little timer. So our sponge is baking, our jelly is setting. So we need, we're going to start making our custard. 450 mils of milk, 25 grams of caster sugar, just with a nice gentle simmer. So we have our three egg yolks, which we've left over from our chiffon sponge mix from earlier. And to that then we're going to add one extra egg. And we're adding in 90 grams of icing sugar and 30 grams of corn flour. So literally, you just want to whisk everything together just to combine everything. We're not looking to incorporate air here, literally just to have everything mixed. That's kind of all we're looking at. It's all combined. And then we're going to add in some vanilla extract. Good generous teaspoon. And you can just help dissolve that little bit of caster sugar. So then once the milk comes to a little simmer, just about half that you can just pour in on top of our egg mixture. Whisk it all together. And then it's straight back into our saucepan. So once it goes back on the heat, you can turn it down a little bit. So you don't want it to catch. But once the eggs go in there, we're going to keep stirring, keep it moving. Um, so we just don't want to scramble those eggs. And be patient here. Uh, temptation is just to return the heat up and just do it really quickly. Just take your time, medium heat, and stand over it and keep it moving. So our custard is ready. You can see it starting to thicken. And as it cools down, it will stiffen up a little bit more. So we just want to just while it's off the heat, just keep it going for about 30 seconds or so. And then we're going to pass it through a sieve. Just to remove any little lumps that might be there. And you can see there's just tiny little bits of an egg that might just cook out. And that's why we pass it through a sieve, just to remove them. So then we're just simply just going to cover it with a little bit of cling film. And you want the cling film to be in contact with the surface of the custard, which will just stop any skin forming on top. So actually, don't just kind of wrap the, the bowl, push it down so it's in contact with the surface. Our jelly is starting to set. So what I want to do now is I want to actually drop in some whole raspberries. I'm going to pop them in here. It's going to go back in the fridge to continue setting. And then what you can do is you can kind of come along as it starts to get a little bit more set, just kind of force them down into it and they'll actually suspend within the jelly. It's back in the fridge, and I'll let the jelly continue to set. So our sponge is baked. So it's 20 minutes, 170 degrees, and you can see it gets a really lovely jump and rise in the oven. The egg whites just give that lovely lightness to it. And just to test, make sure it's baked through, to the skewer, it should come out clean, exactly what we want. So we're just going to leave that to one side, we're going to allow it to cool. Um, our jelly is going to finish setting, uh, our custard is cooling down, and then later then we're going to assemble and bring our whole trifle together. 
we're almost there now. So the last thing we just need to do is we need to whip our cream. So we're going to make uh, a creme chantilly. So it's just like a sweetened cream. So it's a little bit of icing sugar and just a flavour, a little bit of vanilla. So it's 250 ml of cream, just a tablespoon of icing sugar and some vanilla extract. So with our cream, it's just kind of the soft peaks is all we're looking for. So now I just need to cut my sponge so it'll uh, fit the bowl that I have. So I'm just kind of roughly measuring it up. So it's it, because it's going next. So you just give me a little rough guide of what I need. So I'm just going to put Here's the top of it, because I'm actually going to hit it with a little bit of port. So I'm going to sit that sponge on top of our jelly. Traditionally, you, yeah, you could be a kind of boozy sherry trifle, but you can you don't have to use anything at all. There's enough actual um, moisture in all the kind of the mixes. If you don't want to soak the, the sponge, but if you want, you could use a little bit of sherry, a little bit of port, some Grand Marnier, if you like a little bit of orange kick to it. Um, but just give it a little bit of a boozy kick. Just going to drizzle some some port over our sponge, allow it to soak in. From there, then our lovely smooth silky custard, and you can always do this in stages as well. The, uh, the jelly can really be done the night before, and the sponge again can be baked in advance to wrap it up to keep it. Last thing, then our lovely whipped cream, and this will sit perfectly in the fridge until you're ready to serve it up. And then just to finish it off, a few more little fresh raspberries and a little bit of chocolate. And that's it, there you are. That's our raspberry and prosecco trifle. And just from me, I just want to wish you all a very happy Christmas and I hope you have a great new year.